In Creo Parametric for performing cabling, you're going to need to create harness parts. And you can create harness parts at multiple different levels. You could create them in a subassembly inside of a subassembly. You could create them in the subassembly. Or maybe you're going to create a cabling subassembly at the top level and create your harness parts in there. Which method that you choose depends on a number of different factors. For example, it can depend on your supply chain, whether you are making those cables or buying those cables, and also what point you are installing those cables. So for example, am I fabricating and installing those cables inside of the subassembly, or am I installing them at the top level? So let's take a look at all three of these different examples. So first off, let's open up this subassembly in its own separate window. This is my subassembly for my power avionics and sensors. And let's say that I am having a cable harness that's going to be fabricated by an outside vendor. It's going to be delivered to me, and then it's going to be installed at this subassembly level. In this particular case, I would probably want to create a subassembly and then create my harness part inside of there. So I would click on the Create button. And for this, let's change the component type to subassembly. And for simplicity, I'm just going to call this my PAS, Power Avionics Sensors Cabling. And click the OK button. Now, for my start part, I can browse over here and use my standard start part. And then click the OK button. And I'll just locate it using the default constraint, which I can access from the right mouse button. Now I can hit the check mark in the component placement dashboard, or middle mouse button will do the same thing. In order to wrap my wires and cables, I'm going to need to grab some different references. So I will activate the cabling subassembly and create a skeleton model. Let's change this to skeleton, and I will leave the default name and I will use my standard start part. And there I have my skeleton created. In order to grab the necessary references, I will activate the cabling skeleton. And then I could create data sharing features like merge inheritance, shrink wrap, or copy geometry. I am a big fan of using shrink wrap features. For simplicity in this video, I'm going to use the outer shell method. But I do want to point out more often these days when I'm doing routing of wires and cables, I like using manual collection because I can control which references I'm getting and not get overloaded with a ton of different references. But auto collect all solid surfaces is probably the uh, one of the easiest methods in order to grab all the surfaces from the solid components. Would I like to exclude internal components? I'm going to say no. And since I'm using that particular method, you'll notice that the different options in here are grayed out. If you were to use outer shell, you do have the ability to control the quality level. But again, I'm just going to use auto collect all solid surfaces. And then, as always, I like to rename the shrink wrap feature to be called the name of the source in case there's ever a problem with my references. I know from the name of the shrink wrap feature uh, what I am referencing. And to create the shrink wrap, let's hit the check mark. Now it's going to go about processing, so let's give this a few seconds to work. The shrink wrap feature has been created. I can tell from the highlighting right now that some components weren't included, probably because when this imported, it probably didn't import as solid. So maybe I need to create an additional copy geometry feature. And let's just grab a few different surfaces in here uh, as necessary references. Let me just grab a couple other ones over here for visual references. And again, I can rename this feature and I'll just call it the copy geometry from my power distribution board and hit the check mark. And that way, I'll have my necessary references for routing my cable. And open up the cabling assembly in its own separate window. So here I have my different references. And I can create my harness parts at this level. Before I jump into cabling mode, one thing I always like to do is check my set of units. Because there is a requirement that your harness part be in the same set of units as the assembly. 
and I'm going to click on the model properties icon. Normally to get to this, you go to file, prepare, and model properties, but this is a command that I use so often, I have it placed in my quick access toolbar. I click on this and I can see, okay, this assembly is in millimeter newton seconds. I have to make sure that my harness part is in the same set of units. If I go to applications and then cabling, over here on the left, I can create my harness and I will call this my PAS harness one. And I'm going to uncheck use default template to show you if I use a model template that has the wrong set of units, I think this one has the incorrect set of units. You'll notice that says, hey, the harness template has different units with the current assembly please select another template. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to use the one that's metric, click the OK button, and now I have my harness part created. And you can have multiple harnesses created in here. So for example, I could create another harness and I'll call it PAS Harness 2. And let's again use our metric start part. And there I have my second harness. So for example, maybe I'm going to have one harness for power and another harness for my avionics. And right now the second harness is activated in the graphics area. We can see it says work harness, PAS harness two. And if I want to make wires and cables in the other harness, I can choose modify harness. And then in the menu manager, pick the other harness over here. We have some other different commands in the menu manager. So for example, you could assign cables if you're using sub harnesses and other different options. Let me click the done button out of there. You can see there's a little green diamond on the first harness now and the information in the graphics area is updated to tell me that the other work harness is the active one. So that's good, let's close out of here and I'm going to close this to get back to my power avionics and sensors subassembly. Now let's say that at this point when I have these different components installed, maybe I'm going to fabricate some cables as necessary and then route them between different components. So maybe it would be appropriate for me to have a harness part right at this subassembly level. So once again, I'm going to check my model properties. Okay, this is also millimeter newton seconds. Now I'll go to applications, cabling, and create harness. And I'm going to call this PAS harness three. And let's uncheck use default template to make sure that I'm using my metric start part. Click the okay button. And now I have my harness part created in my subassembly. If I expand the subassembly in the subassembly, there you see my first two harnesses. Let's close out of here and close this. And now we are back at the top level of the assembly. And maybe after my avionics subassembly is installed and I've got my structure all placed and all the everything, maybe I'm gonna have some additional cables that are going to be installed at this level. So I might want to have a cabling subassembly at my top level. So let's call this, let's create our subassembly, create and change this to subassembly, and let's call this UAV cabling I'll just call it top level click the OK button and let's browse and use my standard start assembly let's then click the OK button and again I'm just going to locate it using the default constraint which I can get to from the right mouse button and then hit the check mark or middle mouse button and I have my cabling subassembly created I can activate it and like before, I could create my skeleton for my different references that I want to grab from the different assemblies. And normally at this point, I would activate my skeleton model and then create the copy geometry features or shrink wrap features for the references for routing the cable at the top level. But let's open up the cabling assembly in its own separate window. I've got no geometry in here. To start off my harness part, I will click on Applications, Cabling, and let's then create our harness. And I'll call this Cabling 
harness top. Let's uncheck the use default template. Click the OK button. And I believe this is metric. Let's click the OK button. Yep, there we go. And there I have my cabling harness part created at the top level. And I might have multiple harnesses at this level as well. So I could create additional harnesses if I wanted to and then use the modify harness in order to activate them. And after I've created my harnesses, you'll notice that many more commands are available in here. Normally at this point, I would then bring in my different spools, which I can get to from the spools command. And in the next video, I will cover how to create and read in different spools. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.